Finance Minister Arun Jaitley is now holding a press conference here in the capital. Yeah, Let's listen had, in. Uh, I had personally had a series of meetings. The officials had a series of meetings, both at the official level and the ministerial level. Finally, it was crystallized to only a few issues. And we did discuss those issues because we want uh, states to be on board. The first, of course, was that uh, the payment of the CST compensation. So I have already announced that uh, we'll make the payment of the CST compensation. But since it's a past liability for some years, we'll have to do it in installments. And I do intend to provide for an installment uh, in this financial year, which goes on to 31st of March. So obviously there will have to be a supplementary grant in February <coughs> to provide for that payment. The second issue was with regard to the inclusion of uh, petroleum products within the GST framework. The states were ad item of one view on the question of keeping alcohol out, which we had agreed. On petroleum, we are faced with the two main queries. One is that the architecture of uh, GST must be a perfect architecture. And secondly, it can provide in the transitory phase a comfort level to the states. And therefore, while uh, accommodating the concerns of the states, the present bill provides for petroleum being included within the constitutional amendment. But the date on which petroleum can be taxed under GST will be decided by the GST Council. The composition of the Council is such that it makes a it actually makes effective the whole concept of cooperative federalism. <coughs> Two-thirds of the representation will be of the states and one-third of the center. So the center has a one-third representation, the states have a two-third representation, and all decisions require a 75 percent vote to be cleared. So the majority of the states can't push a decision, the center alone can't put a, push a decision, but the two collectively can push a decision. And therefore the states and the center will collectively decide. And no one can arbitrarily decide when to do it. And similarly all other decisions of the, of the finer print of the GST when it's implemented. Having got over these two issues, there were state-specific issues. And the state-specific issues were with regard to octoroy in the octoroy charging states or entry tax, with regard to the manufacturing states who fear that initially their taxation may come down, to agricultural producing states uh, who felt that purchasing tax uh, once subsumed will cost them revenue. Now this was a key ca concern. And then there was a collective concern. What happens if uh, the actual tax collected by a state goes down? I have always called it the fear of the unknown. This was there at the time of VAT, it is there now. And therefore, collectively, we arrived at a formulation. There will be taxes which the states are not entitled to, which they will be now entitled to, service tax. And a large share comes from uh, Maharashtra, some share comes from Karnataka. So their octroi loss will be more than compensated. <coughs> Secondly, for a two-year period, with a sunset clause,
to give them initial comfort, we have provided for an additional 1% SGST. Additional tax. Additional tax, we call it, not SGST. That's the wrong phrase that I've used. As far as the states are concerned. No, there's not an entry tax. It's a general tax, 1%. Thirdly, we have given a constitutional assurance itself, not an oral assurance, that in the first five years, any loss will be compensated to the extent of 100% in the first year, 75%, first three years, 75% in the fourth year, and 50% in the fifth year. With these additional taxes within the kitty of the state, this 1% additional tax for two years and a constitutional assurance of five years, I think the transition phase will be adequately comfortable as far as the states are concerned. We don't envisage the revenues of any state to come down. The consuming states will gain immediately. With service tax within their ambit, the producing states being more affluent will also gain from the very beginning. But we have more than provided for those states to be benefited. I do believe that uh, seamless transfer of goods and services, absence of Inspector Raj, no tax on tax, obviating the possibility of evasion and avoidance will actually add to the revenues of both the state and the center. It will be a win-win situation for both of us. And it will be the single most important tax reform after 1947. On the procedure of how we arrived at, we have all agreed the states uh, had a position. In the meeting I had with the states uh, on last Friday, some issues were raised. I then requested the states, and I am glad to say that in almost all cases, the states were not divided on political lines. <coughs> Any comfort that they wanted was on the center-state relationship issue. And I think that's a high point for Indian federalism. Someone tried to reopen settled issues without going into any details of this. I requested the states to, after giving them adequate comfort of what I have said just now, to sit with me separately or have a group sitting with me. Who comes as a part of the group? was a decision of the states. We did not select anyone. If someone didn't choose to come because a priority was to a flight being taken out of Delhi, then that's not a problem of my creation. That meeting continued till late night. I think most of you also burnt midnight oil that day. It is incorrectly stated that only the chairman came or one or two members came except for the fact that uh, cameras were not fitted into that meeting, the media standing outside knew everything as to who was there. <laughs>